Welcome. You have seen them probably yesterday before. Maybe you were in the, in the luck and you taking classes with them. And um, so, but still, in, anyone who has not heard them to talk in the class or, okay, some of you. Then, one more time, this is Sugar Sullivan. <laughs> Barbara Billups. And uh, we're glad we got the ghost of Jester Whitmore over here. What did you have for food today? I don't want it. <laughs> in the middle. In the middle. In the middle. Gotcha. Oh, you got me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. So, my first question to you, and wait, I want to say something. Um, this is a very interactive uh, talk that we want to do, so I will ask some questions, but if any of you has questions, please feel free to ask them, because in the theater we didn't have the opportunity, but here we have the opportunity, so you can ask anything you wanted to know. Within reason. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> but of course you can stretch the so reason. What I would like to know from you is, because we heard a lot about how you met and everything, but what brought you on the dance floor? So what made you say, I want to dance and I want to dance the Lindy Hop, I like this I music. I said it. Oh, sorry. Okay, what did you make hate the Lindy Hop? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did not say I wanted to learn the Lindy Hop. I just like to see it done. And then I wanted to be on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. And that way I could learn it on my own and do my own little thing. I didn't want to do it exactly the way they was doing it. But um, a man came to me. He saw me on the outside every night. I would be in the support every night that I could. I was working too, but I would leave the job and go to the support. And this fella, one night, he just grabbed me. And he took me in the floor and I said, uh -uh, I can't do that. He said, come on. I said, I don't want to do that. He said, come on. I said, no. They was all dancing and going on and looking good to me. And he told me, he said, wait a minute. What I want you to do is do the same thing I saw you doing on the outside. Come in here and show them. I said, uh-uh. So he kept on pulling me and pulling me. And I'm pulling back and he grabbed, grabbed me and got me in the middle of the floor. <laughs> And when he got me in the floor, middle floor, he started dancing with me, and I started dancing. I didn't realize I was doing what I was doing. But then there was other fellas coming in, and you know, once that, once I realized, once you're in the floor, and if some of the other fellas would tap them and dance with you, then you know you was doing good. <laughs> so I, I didn't mind it after then. But then they were trying to show me this routine. And I said to myself, Barbara, you know you can't do that. But they kept on saying, come on, come on, come on. And then I thought I did good, but I wasn't for sure until the next night when I went in the Savoy. I couldn't wait to get in the Savoy because I wanted to do that dance again. But I said, maybe the same thing with that show. Now, nobody usually be there every night. Most of them there every night. Maybe he won't be there, but maybe since someone else came up to ask me to dance, maybe I eventually would learn it, not that I wanted to now. So all of a sudden I walked in the door and everybody hollered, everybody began to say hi, hi. When I first went in there, nobody was saying hi to me. They were saying <laughs> hi to each other. But after that night, they started saying hi, hi. And this lady came up to me and she said, do you know who you were dancing with last night? 
I said, what is she talking about? I said, no, but that's my husband. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I said, I know I'm in trouble now. So she, she said, come in. She grabbed my hand and pulled me to the side. Let me show you what he was trying to get you to do. And I'm saying to myself, oh, my God. That one, she took me to the side. And from that day to this one, she not been just like this. Because of her husband. <laughs> no. So Barbara, just to clarify, what was the reason you went to Savoy Ball? Was it for the good music or the uh -uh, good man? Uh -uh, I was looking for a husband. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for a husband because yes. he told me you found some nice husband at the Savoy. See, that's I what I was doing. <laughs> So that's why. Okay. But believe it, I never got married. No. No. <laughs> so anyone uh, still available here? Still <laughs> You're looking, looking now. Still looking. <laughs> <laughs> now I will come over on the other side. Actually, it's easier with the microphone now. Because you just pass the mic. Yeah, but then the cable is all, all over. And we don't want to strangle Chester. No. Oh. Don't. Mm. <laughs> okay, I prevent that you will s want to string, I will, okay. Um, so, you were at the, f at the Savoy Ballroom before Barbara. So, what was the reason you went to the Savoy Ballroom? Um, I was about uh, 13 years old, and I loved musicals in, in the movies. And uh, my boyfriend and I, we went to, the, to see uh, Health of Poppin'. And these people was flying across the stage and throwing each other up and down between the legs. And I would had slowed up on my tap dancing at that time. And I said, I've got to learn that. That's my next dance. So uh, I told him, I said, pay attention to what they're doing. <clears throat> and we stayed in the movies until they put us out, mm -hmm. which the matron is a matron for children, and you uh, have to leave when she goes off from work, which is like 6 o'clock. So we stayed in there, watched the movie over and over again, just, just to see the dance sequence, and we did that for the rest of the week, as long as it stayed in the movies, so we could get these, try to get these steps. And then we would go to Central Park in, uh, in New York. We'd go down and find a secluded spot and some grass, and we would try these steps. And uh, uh, every year, every month, uh, we belonged to a teenage canteen in Harlem that the Pepsi Cola <coughs> Club put there. And uh, once a month, we'd put on a show at the canteen because our parents were not allowed to come in. So they could come in on that night. So I told them, I said, from now on, I'm not tap dancing, I'm not singing, we're doing this dance. We didn't know what the name of it was because you only see it. They don't tell you what the name of it is when you're watching the movies. So uh, we got some, a few steps together, and we started practicing and started doing it at, at the Pepsi Cola Club. So that's what made me want to learn that dance. And um, we entered a contest uh, when I was 14. We entered a contest in Central Park. They had uh, that the band show. They sponsored a contest uh, from uh, Disney. He was uh, bringing out a movie called, it was a little short, called Make Mine Music. Mm. And it had swing music on the jukebox in this, in this movie. And so Lindy was the perfect thing to show for the contest, you know. And we happened to win first place in Central Park. And then a lady told us about the Harvest Moon Ball in Madison Square Garden that goes on every, every year, and the finals were in September. So that's what got me here. <laughs> um, speaking about Helsa Poppin, uh, you know, there was Frankie, Anne, and L, Norma, Leon, all these people. When did you meet them the first time? Oh, uh, probably mm, maybe 19, let's see, 48, mm, maybe 
50, 1950, uh, because um, I started going to Savoy when I, uh, when I was eight, eight, 1948, because I couldn't go in before I was 18. And um, once in a while, they would come up on a Monday night. The guys would come up. Uh, we didn't see the ladies too often. Norma never came up. Once she was out of there, she was out of there. She never came. But there was one girl called, um, oh gosh, Esther, Esther Washington. And um, I used to watch her. She would come up and the guys would come up. And she had good footwork and I loved to, to watch it. And um, that's when we met them, you know. They come up once in a while, you know because a lot of them, they were working out of town, traveling and that type of thing. And I danced with Leon, I danced with Al, and I danced with Frankie. Yeah, so it, it, that was great, yes, yeah. Thank you. I, I will come to, to you, Chester and Barbara, back in a second, but. Yeah, stay there. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, but because you mentioned, I'm not actually not sure, Barbara, have you been in the clips with uh, Maura Dean when she was there recording because Sugar is in there? I know. No. You know? Before. Was before? Before, was, before was it? Okay. Yeah, Maura Dean was there before. Okay. Can you tell anything about what happened there? In, in case you don't know, there's um, some clips or um, a collection of recordings <coughs> called The Spirit Moves. And it was by a Russian uh, woman who was like doing documentaries, and she went to the Savoy Ballroom to record the dancers. And there's a lot of clips that were taken at the Savoy Ballroom, and there were also special shots made with the dancers to record all this stuff. And a lot of the things we actually, for us, before we also met like Frankie Norm and all these people, were watching <coughs> these clips and trying to learn the routines, if it was the Big Apple or the Tranky Do and whatever. And so these were the things that we actually used. And originally, the clips had no sound on the recording, so the sound was stopped later. And this is why, for example, for the Tranky Do, the structure of the music doesn't match the dancing, actually, but everyone is doing it now to the same song that was dubbed over to the, to the music. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, people were always coming up to the Savoy, and, uh, oh, we want to film you, we're going we're gonna to show you all over the world. Yeah, 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 right. You know. <laughs> we went through that a, f a few times, you know. Um, they would like pay us to do the, the filming, and that was the end of it. We never heard anything about it. And when Maura Dean came up, she had the same spiel, you know. You're going to be famous. We're going to show you all over the world. So we said, yeah, okay, how much are you paying tonight for filming or whatever, you know. So we did a few, a few times we uh, did uh, films uh, with her. And uh, she built up quite a library. And nowadays, it's all over the world. It really is. She, she lived up to her promise. When... Um, we got a letter, I got a letter to come to a Lincoln Center on a certain date. Um, and uh, they said it was, uh, there was a lawyer that wanted to speak to all of us. And so when I spoke to everybody, did you get a letter? So like, yeah, right, what is that all about? Well, we didn't know, you know. So we went to this meeting at Lincoln Center. And uh, what they did was they showed the filming. And then this gentleman got up on the stage and he said, I'm Maura Dean's lawyer. She passed away since such time, blah, blah, blah. And she wanted all of you to see the film and to receive her check with her thanks. So we were like, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a surprise. We did not expect any of that, you know? And she, like, she lived up to her promise. Yes, she did. She definitely did, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Barbara. I'm going to be nice today, yeah. I hope yes. You don't have to be nice to me. I I'm going to be nice. I'm used to that people be mean to me, so don't worry. <laughs> he started to say, I'm used to you, Barbara. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say it. <laughs> No. Um, 
Well, we talked about the, you know, some of the inventors and creators of the Lindy Hop, like Frankie and all these people. Um, Sugar said you came a little bit later into the group, into the scene, so after Moradin. Um, did you ever meet all the original dancers in the Savoy Ballroom? Well, I don't even so, know. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I met them because we worked on the same shows together. But one thing that really surprised me, and I didn't realize it until, um, uh, well, Frankie and his son worked with my mother. And I didn't do that until the, uh, till, um, his son told me. He said, you don't remember me. He said, but my father and I was working when you came down where your mother worked. And he said, she, remember she remembered? And I, I, I still didn't remember until maybe a later. Then I said, oh, now those were the two men that my mother introduced me to and told them that she's going to the Savoy. She's met people there and she's been dancing. But I worked with both of them on different shows. We worked and we went to the same place together. You know, we worked in a lot of uh, out of town. We worked in, in special. Um, London. Yeah, London and uh, Pittsburgh. Was it Pittsburgh was that you and I went to? Might have been. Yeah. We, we worked a lot of places. I worked a lot of places with them, but it not. Was a rain. Yes, Harry, yes. Mm -hmm. And me and Chad began to be real friends. So how often in the week have you been going dancing? Since I've gotten older? No, when you were younger. <laughs> oh, well, when I was younger now, I went dancing all the time, especially after I met them. I was there every night in this world, every night. I always went to my job on time, but I left early. I went and... We and Sugar and I, we went every place. Small Paradise, uh, Central Ballroom. Connie's Inn. That's right, Connie's, Connie's Inn. Dancing Connie's Inn, that was a bar. A small bar, but they always had a combo in there. And we would dance there some nights, you know. That's right. And there's not a hotel in New York that we did not dance, that had dance, that we didn't go. So what time did you normally go dancing and what time did you go home? <laughs> well, if the dance started at 9 o'clock, we might have been there at 8 to make sure we got in, because most of the places there in New York it was full. You have to wait. They won't let you in because there's so many people there. You know? And most of them clubs, am I right, you go that way. Yeah. They stay crowded. You know? It could be two or three hotels in one block, they all would be crowded. So they wouldn't let you come in at a certain time. And we went when the sun came up. That's when we went home. <laughs> Early in the morning. Yeah, you don't want to miss something. No. No. Early in the morning, stayed up all day long. We didn't sleep. There was no such thing as going to sleep. No. I had two children, I had no time to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened at night, my mother said, make sure those kids are asleep. Yes, mama. I didn't, I wasn't working, I didn't work. I didn't work, but my mother worked. And uh, as long as I put them to sleep, you know, before I left, my son, he was a, uh, he didn't want to go to sleep. So I'd, I'd get dressed, get him bed, ready for bed. My, do my, grand my daughter, she'd be asleep. I put him in the bed and I lay there and I sing to him and I pat him through the crib, you know? And then when he got quiet, I said he was asleep. But my mother the next morning, you know that boy was asleep. You wasn't to the corner before he said, ah, ah. So I was just, you know, as soon as I thought he was asleep, lights was out there, I tip out the back door, because we had two doors to our apartment. Tip out the back door and break for the corner. <laughs> and she knew I was going to, my mother knew I was going to do that, because she knew I, I go dancing every night, you know. But, uh, you know, he was a good baby, so she didn't mind. You know, Sugar she mother didn't mind. loved keeping those kids. Let's face it, she yeah. really did. She loved, she, she, she would tell her, you know the kids wasn't sweet, but she didn't mind. Yeah, she didn't mind at all. She didn't mind. 
But we would, because after we left Savoy, we had to go get something to eat. You know, so if we leave the Savoy at 3 o'clock, then we got to go get the uh, chicken and waffles, you know, or, or we go to the, the, the place where they have the gumbo, you know. So we got home 3, 4, 5 times, you know. But hey, I had to do what I had to do, you know? Yeah, I had to get out to dance and I had to take care of the babies in the daytime. What can I tell you? And uh, when we would rehearse in the Savoy in the daytime, I'd take them up there when they was, too, before they went to start going to school, and that floor was their playground. They loved the Savoy, my daughter and my granddaughter, my, my daughter and my son. They loved the Savoy floor. <laughs> So that's what that's that. That was our life, you know. That was our second home, and that was our second family. Yeah, because all of the the, the ones that were there every night, the um, the steady ones, you know, and we were all trying to win the Harvest Moon Ball. So we were there every night practicing, trying to learn new steps, you know. And uh, in the daytime, we would go up in the daytime. Also, we would go up maybe say. 11 o'clock, dance till about two. Everybody would, you know, was showing each other. And we didn't have classes or anything like that. We would just show, people would show you steps. And sometime uh, um, uh, Frankie or Al, they would come up in the daytime, you know, and they see somebody doing something, they say, no, no, wait, let me show you. It's an easier, but a better way to do that, you know. Do it, do this, do it this way, you know. And the guys would spot, spot us, the girls when we were trying to do aerial steps, they would spot us to keep us from, you know, f falling, hurting ourselves or whatever. And uh, it was never classes, they just, they would show you things, you know. I'll show it to you again, two or three times, okay, practice, I'll be they back. They didn't do that I'm going to talk me. to somebody else. They know? did not do that to me. <laughs> They'll show me in steps that, Barbara, you get in that corner and you do it. They didn't take me two or three times, she knew it. I was trying to be nice. You know? <laughs> But that's what they would do, you know. They'd show it to you and walk away. That's right. <laughs> and you'd have to, uh, later on or the next day, you know, uh, could you show me such and such thing again? Okay. But they would show it to you. <laughs> they would show it to you. Yeah, that's how that went. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you very much. So, Sugar and Baba. You've been growing up on the East Coast, and if I'm not mistaken, Chester, you were growing up on the West Coast? Yeah. Yep. Well, wait a minute before you get to Chester. Chester yeah. had us <laughs> at the Apollo. He had Sugar and I, and a lot of us, at the Apollo. <laughs> this was for uh, Frankie's 100 birthday. And he worked the devil out of us. <laughs> he really did. He had us up there. He put us in the corner, and then he'll do something to the band, he'd come back. No, no, that ain't right. It's got to be done this way. And we'd go, he'd go back, and then he'd come back, and he said, what did I tell you? You got to be done this way. But he worked us. But we enjoyed it. We really did. Because after the people was talking about it for days. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>